and welcome back to lesson 8 of basic CNC programming. In this lesson we're going to be talking about plane selection and I's and J's. Now when you look at the top of the program we have what's called a safety line right here and on that safety line you will see the G17. The G17 is a XY plane selection and that works hand in hand with the I's and J's that you'll see. So now let's talk about what I's and J's are and what planes are. So let's look at an illustration where we'll see three possible plane selections. Alright, so we've learned about the x-axis and the y-axis making up the xy plane, flat plane, which the machine knows as a G17 plane. So the machine now knows that any geometry picked in that plane the tool is perpendicular to that surface. Another reason why we need to know the plane selection is because when the tool produces an arc, it needs to know the I and J value of that arc. And we're going to learn about that in the next illustration. Now there are two more plane selections that we need to learn about. And that is the G18 plane, which is the X and Z. And then also the G19 plane, which is the Y and Z. Now, in the G18, we use I's and K's. In the G19, we use J and K's to swing a radius. Now, let me make it a little bit more clear how these planes are oriented to each other. So hopefully this helps. You can see here the red plane is the plane that we've been working with. And so when I run a tool path, you can see that the tool is perpendicular to that plane. And when we make a radius, the I's and J's are used to make that radius. Okay. Now on the G18 plane or the XZ plane, when we swing a radius, we use I's and K's. So the machine now knows that the tool is perpendicular to that plane. And then one more time, the tool is perpendicular to the G19 plane. And then it knows to use the J's and K's when swinging a radius. Okay, so let's go back to the XY plane, which is what we'll be using on our three axis mill. Uh, those other planes are mainly used on more complex machines with multi axis, where the tool can actually be oriented in different directions. But on the three axis mill that we've been learning about, uh, the tool will always be perpendicular to the G17 plane. So, therefore, we will always be in a G17 mode. Okay, so let's go look at the program and talk a little bit more about those I's and J's. All right, so we're back to our two by two inch square. We have a quarter inch radius on each corner and we're using a half inch end mill. So let's take a look at our cutter path here. We can see that we are engaging cutter comp right here with this 100 pound move. We're walking around the party in a clockwise motion, so we are climb milling and we made a perpendicular move away from the part, canceling cutter comp. So that that much you have learned, and here is the program that it actually posted out, and this this program in the machine would actually produce this shape. But what I want to talk about is the I's and J's that you see in the code. And a lot of machines will only accept I's and J's. Now in previous videos we've talked about clockwise and counterclockwise arcs. And we've used a radius to learn our coordinates and our radius value. But let's talk about I's and J's because the majority of the machines are going to need the I and J value to swing that radius. So let's step through the program and actually discuss what or how those I's and J's are determined. 
So we're sitting right here at our start point, x minus 0.5, y 0.350. And our first move is our g1, g41, y 0.250. So that's where we are engaging our cutter comp. Then our next move goes to x1 inch 750 in a linear motion or straight move right there and it stops tangent right there at the start of that radius okay so the center line of the tool is lined up with the tangent of that radius now let's let's dissect this line real quick what happens on this line with the i's and the j's now we know that the g2 is going to do a clockwise arc around this radius now the x 2 inches 250 and the y minus 250 is the end point of the radius. That's the coordinate in x and y of the end point. Now the i represents the x value, so left to right, okay, the x value of the distance from the center point of the tool to the center point of the radius. So since they are perfectly in line, there is no x value. So therefore, i is 0. Now, j, on the other hand, is the distance in y from the center of the tool to the center of the radius. So we have a half inch tool, which means we have a 250 radius. We also have a 250 radius on our parts, so we add 250 and 250, we come up with 0.5 or 500 thousandths. Now, the minus is the direction from the center of the tool to the center of the radius. And that is done in a y minus direction or j minus. Okay, so it is the distance from the center line of the tool to the center line of the radius. Okay. So therefore, it's a minus value. So again, the i is the x value, which, which there is none because it's perfectly lined up with the center line of the radius. And the j is the y value of the distance from the tool to the center of the radius. So let's complete that move. All right, so there we are. We're sitting now at the end point of that radius. Now we're going to move in a straight line to the next tangency point. Now notice, real quick, there is no y value here and here. If the value does not change from the previous line, there is no need, the machine does not need to have that value mentioned again. Now in previous videos we have talked about x and y's on the line and that's because we needed to get a good understanding of each coordinate but now the next step that you need to learn is if the y or the x value does not change on the next line there's no need to mention it again so from g1 to g2 both x and y changed so therefore you need to mention it but now we're still sitting at x2 inches 250 when we went down to y minus 1 inch 750 so there's no need to mention at x 2 inches 250 again that stays what they call modal okay all right so we're getting ready for our next clockwise arc and so let's dissect this line the g2 again is a clockwise arc and our end point of that arc once it's completed the x value is 1 inch 750 and the y value is minus 2 inches 250 when it goes right here now the i and, G and the j is determined from the start point of the radius always. So remember, the x and y value is the end point of that radius. The i's and j is, the, is determined at the start of that radius. So now let's take a look. The i we talked about was the x value from the center of the tool to the center of the radius. So now you can see there is a distance there. So again, it is going into the minus direction. So half of the tool, 0 0.250, and a 250 radius. So therefore, 
I is minus 0.500 or minus a half an inch. Now this time the J, the, the Y distance from the center of the tool to the center of the radius is zero. So therefore the J or the Y direction or distance is zero. Let's complete that move. We'll go into the next corner. Again, we're just moving in X. Y does not change, so there's no need to mention it on this line because it stays modal. So let's go there. There we are. The center of the tool, again, is perfectly lined up with the tangent of the radius and also the center point of that radius. So again, G2, clockwise arc. X and Y is the end point of that radius. The I and J is determined at the start of the radius. So the I represents the X value, or X distance, from here to the center line of that radius. So there is no distance, so therefore that is I0. J from the center of the tool to the center of the radius is a positive distance. So again, half of the half inch tool, 250 thousandths, and a quarter inch radius, so that it, that distance is 500 thousandths. Okay, so let's complete that move. Then we're going to move to y minus 250 in a straight line, and then one more g2 to finalize this square with the four corners. We're going to do a clockwise arc. X250, Y250 is the end point. Okay, now the I is the X distance from the center of the tool to the center point of the radius in X. So that's a positive direction this time. Okay, so that's a half inch. J is the Y value. Of course, Y is perfectly lined up, so therefore J is a zero. So let's complete that move. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna make a hundred thousands move away from the part where we cancel our cutter comp. So that's how I's and J's take the place of the R value. And on most machines, it only understands I's and J's instead of the R value. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.